Welcome to our first youth employment workshop. Um, we've had a couple of forums, but this one is different because we have young people. Um, we've had a couple where we had um, different stakeholders from your municipality, just other different people that are involved in youth development. So today we have young people between 18 and 24. Our project is called um, Bambisanani and it's funded by the EU under the Citizens in Action program. Um, it's a local level project which is aimed at identifying youth unemployment challenges in specific municipalities across South Africa. From these conversations, um, together with some research, we will be producing some what we call policy guide uh, for local stakeholders and some policy recommendations. I stay in an area where there is absolutely no hope given to us as young people or a, a helping hand. When you are approaching young people who are in a mindset of I've already achieved nothing so there's nothing to work for. The problem is that no one listens to us as young people. We get told we are the generation of tomorrow. I firmly believe that we are the generation of today. And I got three children now. My elder son is four years old. My second child is my middle son, is one year old, and my baby is three months old. Um, my community, ravaged by drugs, gangs, uh, young people, no, no, um, having no hope. We as youth are exposed to crime rates in our area, and there's so little people that lend a hand to us. Like, we don't have enough support from the government that inspires us to be the best that we can be and they don't educate us enough around employment. I stay in Mrs. Plain. I find Mrs. Plain not a good place to live in. I advise teenagers like to try the utmost best to get out of the place and not live there because there is a lot of crime and it can influence you very badly. Our fathers tend to not step up. You're either likely to become a gangster or fall pregnant. Those are things that I refuse to resort to. When young people start acting like adults and doing what adults are supposed to be doing, there's this gap with, within themselves to find who they are. Unemployment is something that could take years to conquer, but with the help of organizations and the government, it shouldn't be impossible to conquer. The reason why I think I cannot go study is because I'm not financially stable. Um, I don't want to apply for bursary because I'm afraid of the disappointments. Plenty of learners that apply for bursaries but only a few get accepted. What's the use of me wasting my time where I can go work? I don't want to face failure because like I had a lot of that in, in the past and that now. I really do need funding, you know, because you can't start up a business. A dream needs to be supported and if there are companies that support people with business ideas. Cape Town is a good place to look for a job. If you agree, you stand in that corner. If you don't agree, you go there. I don't think Cape Town is great for finding a job because I am still unemployed. I think employers here seem to prioritize flexibility. And, you know, as a student, like, I do need money, so I would like a part-time job or something with, with, with hours that would work for me, and I think most people turn me down when they find out that I'm a student. There is no job this side. A lot of people are staying there, not working, looking for jobs. My school gave me sufficient information and guidance on what to do after leaving school. I feel like my school didn't prepare me for the outside world. I had to figure it out on my own. So the idea is that you're going to be employed in four or five years, which is great, but I'm broke now, you know, so I need, I need a job now. I need part-time work. And that's something, like, they don't prepare you for that. They, don't, they just assume that your parents are going to provide for you. Today, we found that young people were talking for themselves. There's a disconnect between what those organizations are claiming to what young people's experience is. Young people will not know those organizations which are often perceived as doing outreach, communicating services for young people and resources which are available for young people who are searching for employment or 
they are intending to establish their own income generation initiatives. Young people are conscious of the fact that the old way of preparing them for the future is certainly not working. I tell myself every day that you get up today because someone that was in your generation didn't get up to see today, so you go out and you go do it. My children, is I look at them and I get up for them and they make me face the world every day in a different way. I just want to give my children the best that I can. And to finish my school, I want to be successful, be independent, and to be able to have a job so that I can care for them. I was part of a gang. I was part of, 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 of selling drugs. I was doing drugs at one time as well. I heard about School of Hope, and School of Hope took me in. And um, I never thought I would get the results that I would get at School of Hope. But um, yeah, they encouraged me a lot. They, they taught me how to really persevere in life. Really gave me something to look forward to something to, to dream about again because I had dreams when I was young. I have a bright future today. I can see I can see what I will achieve one day. I believe if you recreate one person you create jobs for a lot of other people. If you have dreams and, and there are opportunities to grab on outside the just continue and follow your dream. We are the future of this country. Since I met school of hope is like they encouraged me to become better and to believe in myself and have confidence. The people who support me is my mother, mostly my mother. She works at the organization, the Amy Peel organization. She's basically a chef there. So she, that, that's also an organization that unemployed people goes to. They get experience from that place. After school, I would like to become a police woman. I want to achieve great things so I can be an example to my community. The gangs and the drugs, you know, they, that's the only role models. That's the, that's the pinnacle of success for them and I want to show them a success that's, that's hard working and not go to jail or die. If I become an entre entrepreneur, it can help me to um, employ and to create so many jobs. I have a dream of becoming a businessman one day and a successful one. The first booming business in Cape Town is the restaurant because it is a is, it is an tourist attraction place. A lot of people come from outside, they love to taste some food in this place. I found my true passion, which is a dance style I possess. It's called tatting and turfing. And I'm very sure I will make a career out of it one day. I practice my art every single day, whether it's before school, walking to school, coming back from school. If it's not dancing, I would like to go into geomorphology. I really want, would like to become a social worker. I would like to become mostly a veterinarian because I care a lot for animals and it is actually my passion. I would actually like to open a shelter for stray animals and things. The role of non-government organization is not adequately recognized. As the young people we had today were all speaking in superlative terms about the value of School of Hope, I feel those institutions do have major influence on young people in a very fundamental way. City has ventured into this project. It's a first in, in a number of ways because we are looking for citizens' initiatives, citizens acting as agents agents in an agency capacity where they are part of the solution rather than citizens waiting for someone to do something to them in order to uh, result in positive outcomes. So this to me is a, is, a, is a very exciting project but we still have to distill for ourselves as CDE what is it that is unique and impo primarily important about this project.